It's all the real building. And it is the building that some of you went to school in. Um, and so, but this gentleman, the contractor's commitment, went way past your typical somebody hired to do a job. And he just came to a great love for it. And you see, he left a message on the blackboard. And that is still here. That thank you, LFGCG, because that's who contracted with him, technically. But past respects is the name of the company. And he had left town. We had the last meeting. He finished up, gotten everything completed. And nothing was on the blackboard uh, at the last time we met. And then I came back out to check on things, and he had left this message. And I was really very moved. It's not that writing on the blackboard is that big a deal. But he had really cherished being part of this project, and he just quietly left a message to that effect. So I think that uh, his involvement is reflective of your all's love for this place. And we were very blessed to get him as a contractor, but he was also, I think, very blessed to find a project that he loved so and kind of became an adjunct to something that's much bigger. So thank you all so much. Um, the fact you cherish your heritage, and not only in a built environment sense, this great school building, but also in a cultural sense, is just special. So thank you. My brother, and I have several here, uh, Jesse Crenshaw, the state representative, is here. We have worked together politically, delivering leases to households for 30 years. And he was once my campaign manager. We successfully won a position on the school board some years ago before most of you were born. May I say that? But anyway, Jesse, you have time for supplement if you would come from. And again, Ms. Kerr, thank you very much. We work. She helped us get the overlay for this historic preservation of the old area of Town. She was a key figure, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I have an apology to make. I missed my turn. And so I started on time, but I'm not on time, and I apologize for, for that. This is wonderful. The hard work that everyone has done, Al has done, and everyone else has contributed to this. Uh, now, I want to say now, you know, I've been involved in a number of things over the years, but I don't have any claims of having been involved in this, so don't, don't, I, I don't like uh, people to take credit for things that they didn't do, so let me say that first of all. I commend Al for many, many things that he's done over the years. And in the tradition of his love for education and his love for history and for his love for his community is what this reflects. It reminds me, now I never attended this school, but I did attend the Old Blue Spring one-room school in Knob Lake, Kentucky for elementary school. And it was the first grade through the eighth grade, and it was a school that was for blacks only. Uh, the nearest school <clears throat> was a mile from where I lived, and we had to walk to the school. It was a school that was all white, and then the school that I attended, Old Blue Spring, was three miles away. So if you missed the school bus, you had three miles to walk, not just next door or anything like that. But the schools that taught us during those days and times, and I'm 67, will be 68 my next birthday, were excellent schools for many reasons. It may have been a one-room school, but it was an excellent school because, one, the teachers cared about each and every student and worked as hard as they possibly could. And there was no allowing you to not perform or to think that you would not be able to do 
anything that you chose to do. And recently I was speaking with Chief Justice John Minton Jr. and he was referring to another gentleman that he had met at a conference, a judicial conference, and that particular gentleman, he could not remember the man's name, but he was a former classmate of mine at Kentucky State University. And William will attest and understand this clearly. Whomever the, the chief judge of the Oklahoma uh, court in Oklahoma said that he was a classmate of mine and that he had said many years earlier that if I would get rid of that afro, I would go far. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, if you all may be able to see I don't have the app for one, and two, most of the hair is gone. So between Old Blue Spring School and all of the things that the teachers over the years there and Kentucky State University uh, have done for me, I understand fully uh, what has taken place in terms of the benefits that you all have received from not only this building, but I'm sure from the teachers who taught here. Uh, Al and I have been teachers and taught together at Kentucky State University. And I can say without a doubt, and it was interesting when the Chief Justice was mentioning Oklahoma, because I had attended the uh, Ralph Bunch High School there in Glasgow, Kentucky. And nearing graduation, I was thinking about going to college, and the captain of the basketball team had gone to Oklahoma City University. So I'm thinking, as a young person during that era, well, if Oklahoma City University accepted our basketball captain, then surely it's a good place. It'll be open arms and welcoming and many things like that. Well, when I found out that it was $16,000 per year for the tuition, all of a sudden, Kentucky State University, where my mother had attended, my aunt had attended, and all of a sudden, that alma mater seemed to be much, much nicer, <laughs> price-wise, as well as the family tradition, that I decided that that was where I would go. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for allowing me to make a few comments. I apologize again for being uh, tardy and getting here, but I really, really commend each and every person that's worked on this, and Al, I commend you tremendously. So thank you all for inviting me to say a few words. Uh, it, it, it brings back memories. Thank you. May I make reference to one or two other persons? Uh, I don't think the vice mayor is here. No, I do not see her. And uh, the commissioner of public services, Dr. Reed, is not here, but he had the opportunity for he could make it. We do have a, a resident of Caden Town who is a county commissioner, and he is here with us instead of uh, the opportunity to speak. I just simply want him to stand. His name is Dr. Richard Meadows, and for my family, he is a professor of the Lear College, where my grandfather well, and grandmother actually attended in the 1890s. Okay, as we move along, we'll get you out of here, and had we known it was going to be this warm, I would have had a barbecue right over there. <laughs> I do have one special guest that... I must introduce to everybody. This person will be a hundred years old, 23 days from today. He attended school in this building in the 1920s. His name is Carl Clifford Halbert. Stand up, man. If you may. Allow me the personal privilege if he wants to make a comment about 
how many F's and A's he made. You know, yeah. people. <laughs> Do you care, care to make any comments, Carl? I'm just so glad that I'm going to be here. I, I, was, I was one of the persons that was in the school when it was first built. And uh, I kind of climbed the ladder, climbed the ladder. Yeah. And this has always been home for me, just trying to live in the peace. Yeah. And it, it's just a, such a blessing. I'm uh, thankful. And the good Lord, we live this long. And I appreciate the fact that you allowed me to get up here. You know, I can't see you, but I can hear you. So I appreciate that so much. All right. Graduating with a master's degree from the University of Kentucky, Rupert was awarded a research assistantship at Washington State University in Pullman, Washington, to pursue a PhD. He was awarded the Doctor of Philosophy degree in Dairy Technology and Chemistry in 1959. After joining the faculty at Tennessee State University for four years, he entered Iowa State University in a postdoctorate program of research. In the fall of 1968, he and his family returned to Florida and m as the Dean of Agriculture and Home Economics for approximately eight years. Later, after several years of service with the, universe, uh, with the U.S. government, I'm sorry, Dr. Seals was named Associate Dean at the University of Nevada College of Agriculture, where he continued to publish prolifically in referee journals and published a book entitled Disparity, which I put this back right here if you want it, give me $1,500, which is an analysis, this is what it is, a, an analysis of the historical, political, and funding factors at the state level affecting black academic agriculture. He retired in 1994. He and his wife still reside in Reno, Nevada. Now you know why he was asked to come so many thousands of miles to be the guest speaker for today. He 
and many young African Americans of Canaan Town began their formal education within these.